In this video, I will show you how to write the perfect user story with examples. We have a lot to cover today. Let's not waste any time. First off, a definition. A user story is a short and simple description of a feature told from the perspective of a person who desires this new capability, usually a user or customer of the system. User stories typically follow a simple template as a type of user. I want some goal, so that some reason. This template is good as it helps us answer three important questions. First, who is it for? And second, what do we want to do or what do we want the system to do that is currently not possible right now? And third, why do we want to do that? When writing user stories, we typically recommend to use the Invest framework, which is a set of guidelines, and when used correctly, will help us write the perfect user story, <laughs> which in the long run will reduce the number of bugs, rework, and help us produce better estimations. The first letter in Invest, independent. Dependencies make things more complex but they should be. As far as possible, try to make your user stories independent. This will make the user story more manageable and easier to develop. Second letter, negotiable. When writing the user story, the developers and the product owner work together. And when working together, the output, the expected output is meeting the definition already so that we can start working on the user story. We can pick it in the sprint to reach this point. We need to negotiate. Maybe the scope is something that we can't do. Technically, it's not possible. Back and forth, questions, answers, negotiations, clarifications, transparency in terms of the user story. Story. This needs to happen. The product owner can't write a user story and tell the developers you are forced to do that like that. No. <laughs> it's a team effort writing a user story. The third letter, valuable, valuable to the customer. Not just valuable to the organization, the product owner, the scrum master, or the developers. No, valuable to the customer. Fourth, estimable. If you're using estimations when planning your sprint, the user story should be in a format and clear enough that the developers can estimate it. Five, small. The user story should be small enough so that we as a team can complete it in a sprint. I recommend user stories that can be completed in two to three days. That's good because gradually, continuously throughout the sprint, you'll see work moving from columns on your scrum board or your Kanban board. Imagine you had a single user story. Everyone is working that user story and it stays in the work in progress column for the entire sprint. Does not make any sense? Why not split this user story into small chunks that would take one day, two days to do? And multiple people can take their own little piece of work and get it throughout the board, flowing smoothly across the board. This drastically increases our chance of being able to complete the user story within the time frame. And the last letter, test table. We should be able to test and ensure that the user stories indeed meet the acceptance criteria. Does what we wanted it to do. Now, the number one question I get with regards to user story is not the invest model. It's all about splitting. Teams have a hard time splitting user stories. And I want to focus on that in this video. Lucky for us, humanizing work and agile consultation company in the US defines eight common patterns for splitting user stories. These patterns are widely recognized as one of the best ways to split user stories effectively. But before going into these patterns, I need to explain to you the agile way of splitting user stories. The vertical split. What you're seeing on the screen right now is the difference between vertical slices and horizontal slices. I'm sure you're aware of horizontal slices. In simple terms, there's the UI, the front-end part, there's the services, the logic part, and the persistence part, the back-end part. What we typically do is treat each part separately. We do a front-end development. Then in the next sprint, we do the back-end development. And then we combine everything together. The problem with this approach is that nothing is really done. The user can't use the feature. Doing only the front-end development, let's say you're doing a mobile application, and you only see the front-end without the back-end. For logic, you can't really use the application. If you do the back and only, you can't really use the application also because you don't see the front end. You don't see the UI. The agile way of splitting is the vertical split. Include changes to each architectural layer sufficient to deliver an increment of value. Small pieces of work that touches each one of these layers that guarantees that at the end of a sprint, something can be actually used by the user, used by the customer, something that works. Instead of doing the all front-end development, back-end development, no, 
part of a front end development. Each section's maybe the logging part, but the logging that actually works. Now, let's go through a few powerful patterns when splitting user stories. The first one is the workflow steps. Let's say in your organization, there's a content manager and they want to publish a simple article to the corporate website, you could write a user story. As a content manager, I want to publish an article to a corporate website, but it's not that simple. There's a lot of workflow steps in order to achieve this end goal. It needs to be reviewed by the marketing department, communication department, legal department. In this pattern, the beginning and the end are usually the most important implementations. The mid steps can be added later on. So I would split the user stories into I can publish a new story directly to a corporate website. Then I can publish a new story with editor review. I can publish a new story with legal review. I can view a new story on a staging site. I can publish a news story from the staging site to production. Each step in the workflow, the second pattern, does the user story have a variety of roles? If yes, can you split the user story to do a subset of the roles first and enhance these roles later on. Let's take the example, simple example of a search function. For a flight, I'm trying to book a flight. As a user, I can search for flights with flexible dates. First user story might be as n days between X and Y. Second, as a weekend in December. Third, as plus n days of X and Y. Different variations implemented independently. The third pattern is called major effort. Sometimes a user story can be split in a way we have a first user story we take most of the time to do. Let's take a simple example of a card processing system. As a user, I can pay for my flight with Visa, MasterCard, Dinner's Club, or American Express. Now we can split this requirement into four separate user stories independent user stories. And let's say we start working on Visa first. When we start working on a user story Visa, we also need to build the whole card processing system, which we don't need to build again for the other MasterCard and other cards. But when writing the user story, we don't really know which one will come first. We'll start building Visa first, MasterCard first. Which one will come first? Which one will require most of the work because we actually need to build the whole card processing system. So we can write the user story in this way. I can pay with one credit card type of Visa, MC, DC, Amex. I can pay with all credit card types, Visa, MC, DC, Amex, given one card type already implemented. The fourth pattern, simple and complex at any point when drafting the user story or when talking with the developers, when trying to get it ready for development, we feel that the story is being more and more complex, getting more and more complex because we are adding things. Pause for a second. What's the simplest version of this user story? Do that and then you can enhance the user story later on. An example would be as a user, I can search for flights between two destinations. This user story is complex, so why not split it into smaller, simple versions, specifying a max number of stops, the next one including nearby airports, next one using flexible dates, independent, simple user stories instead of a big, complex one. Pattern number five, variations in data. Does the story do the same thing to different kinds of data? If yes, can you split the user story to process the one kind of data first, and then you can process the other kinds of data later on? As a user, I can search hotels in the North America, in East Asia, in Europe. Pattern number six, does the story get the same kind of data from multiple interfaces? If yes, can you split the user story in a way to connect to a single interface first, and then you can add the other interfaces later. The next pattern is differ performance. Sometimes a user story, it's simple to do, to actually make it work, but the performance side of things, maybe to make it secure, to make it perform better, this part, takes time. So why not split it in a way that you write a user story first? A simple, get it work so that the user can actually test it. Use it, but obviously it's not secure or it's not fast enough. You can improve the security and make it fast enough in other user stories, but at least with the first user story, the user gets to actually use and test it. And the last pattern, operations, does the story include multiple operations? If yes, can you split the user story in a way that each user story includes one operation? As an example, as a user, I can manage my account. I can sign up for an account. I can edit my account settings. I can cancel my account. 
different, independent user stories, simple user stories. So these were the eight patterns. If you want more details on these patterns, how to split the user story, how to write the perfect user stories, go check out the link in the description of this video. And if you want more tips and insights on Agile Scrum personal growth, click on the video that stands out the most on the screen right now. And I'll see you in a few seconds.